Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. Your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see here on our channel or any Watchbox platform. Reach out to me directly, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. Today, we're discussing the incredible Zin UX, a timepiece based on a model originally launched as the ECM-2 during the 1990s. The first civilian UX arrived in 2006, and it is spectacular. One of the only oil-filled watches you will ever encounter outside of Resence. The timepiece in U-boat steel measures 44 millimeters in diameter by a surprisingly svelte 13.5 millimeters thick. Lug to lug, it's 51 millimeters, and if you include the end link to end link span, that is the absolute measurement across the wrist. It's a beefy 56.4 with a 22 millimeter spacing between the lugs. Let's take a look at the watch on my wrist, which is 16 centimeters in circumference. And what strikes you is that it fits pretty well. It's not all that thick, largely because of its construction. It is a quartz watch, but also because it doesn't need to be thick. All of the structural resistance to depth pressure is served by the internal oil. So the watch doesn't need to be built up like a bank vault, and you can see that it will slide under a cuff. Across the wrist it's broad, but the lugs are short, tightly downturned, and I don't get the feeling that I'm wearing a 44 millimeter watch. I would say on a wrist as small as 15 centimeters circumference, you're good to wear this one. It is comfortable. It is also weighty and substantial. Now, Zinn, of course, uses U-boat steel that comes from German shipyards. It is harder than standard steel, which is typically about 250 Vickers. This is more like 400 to 450 Vickers, so it is harder, but its primary advantage is that it is phenomenally corrosion resistant. Like Rolex 904L steel, you don't need to rinse it after exposure to chemicals or salt. The entire case and bracelet, media blasted. It's a durable utilitarian finish that fits the watch. The bezel is carbon diffused or tegmented, so it has a surface coating several microns thick that is 1200 Vickers, so it is even more scratch resistant than the watch. The Zinn bracelet is formidably constructed with hex screws fixing the removable links. You can see that there's plenty of gapping to avoid pinching skin, pulling hair, or trapping wrist heat. It has a folding clasp, single fold, with a clamshell lock, and then internally there are a couple of different divots that allow you to re-anchor the bracelet inside the clasp, but you see there is a full fold-out dive extension too, so you can incrementally change the sizing or you can remove a link. You have either option and then there is the fold-out dive extension, so three means of adjustment. Rolling back to the case, it's simple and strong. The mid-case is actually pretty thin for a dive watch. It looks more like an aviator's timepiece, and you can see that in Zinn fashion, the crown is off-center, this to make the watch ambidextrous, as it will dig neither right nor left wrists. Now, the bezel, which is tegmented and very hard, is also a captive bezel, which means it's held on by screws rather than snapped on, which means you can't snap it off. So it is considerably more resilient against hard hits than, say, a Rolex or a Mega bezel. Now, you line up the enormous index. By the way, let's hear that click. It has a light, springy, and wonderfully mechanical feeling detent. It is a true pleasure. You can also see that the index itself is huge. And now you have a zero to 60 minute count up timer that I find more intuitive to read than a chronograph. On the dial of the watch, you can see that it is no nonsense. Everything that you need is essentially in white, so it's easy to read at a glance. The entirety of the inside of the watch is full of oil, which means the dial's full of oil. The movement is bathed in oil. Immediately under the crystal, there is oil, and it has three advances or advantages via the advance. The timepiece, which has hydro stamped on the dial, hydro is the system whereby the case is full of oil, so 5,000 meters water resistant by virtue of the fact that it's incompressible. Second, you have absolutely no distortion, no matter the angle at which you view the dial, because the index of refraction for the oil and the sapphire is exactly the same. You'll notice the same trait on many Resence watches. You can view them from any angle without distortion. And finally, it prevents the crystal from fogging, so three distinct advantages. The crown, of course, is a screw-down crown, and it uses Zinn's D3 sleeving system to further increase its stability in the hand and also its water resistance when screwed down. 
take a look at the case back. A lot going on here. You can see it's made of German U-boat steel, and they boast, and they should. It's tough stuff. The movement itself is based on the ETA Thermal Line family. It's technically the 955652. It has a remarkable 180-month power duration, thanks to a lithium battery. Seven joules, watchmaker built, watchmaker adjusted, and when the time comes, watchmaker serviced. It has stop seconds and a quick set date. It features an end-of-life indicator in the form of a grandly jumping seconds hand. It'll let you know when it's approaching the end of its life. And it is thermocompensated. These movements have been known to achieve accuracy of 15 to 10 seconds per year. These ETA Thermaline series movements are very, very accurate, in addition to being true luxury quartz calibers. So this watch excites in every regard, aesthetically and mechanically. It's nearly indestructible. Email tmasa at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details. We're back with the Zen UX. Note the loomed counterweight to the seconds hand. 